artists are, you know, they're sort of prophets. They, they don't live in quite in the same world the rest of the world lives in. They see things at a different level. The doors are open to them to sort of eternal truths. That's what has affected them, and that's where they live. And you, you don't want them to, to spend too much time in the same world that you do, because they might lose that, you know? You hope that, that when somebody comes to look at art at the Speed Museum, they're getting some of that feeling that they're liberated from whatever their box is in which they live into another kind of world. There's a sense of mystery of why I'm, a, why I'm collecting, you know. How did this all happen, you know? Uh, I'm not totally sure. Surprise has always been a big part of my life. The best things come with surprise. And it's something that you weren't, you were kind of being prepared for, but you didn't realize it. <laughs> uh, I started off thinking that I was probably going to be a uh, teacher of English literature. I, ma I majored in, in English literature at college. And then I went off to the University of St. Andrews in Scotland. And uh, there, much to my surprise, I read uh, T.S. Eliot's Four Quartets. And that started me on a totally new venture, which was basically religion. Everybody who collects has their own beginnings and own reasons. To me, all art starts with nature. It starts with clay. <laughs> it starts with, with things that you can touch and feel. I see in the earth either two things. One is a landscape or two, a, f a figure. Even in very abstract art, I keep seeing figures. And I think that, that, that a lot of art is simply being reminded of what you already know. And, and I found that true in preaching, you know, that, that, uh, that you're not telling anybody anything about anybody new. You're reminding them of what they already know. And so I think that that's the same idea, I think, when you go to a, to, to a museum. I think that, that looking at art is really a very individual experience. You just have to, you have to take time to let it sink in, to connect, you know. I never really started collecting until really Mary and I sort of started it together. And so that became a, a passion for both of us. So this is how it started. <laughs> I'll pull this thing out. This is a piece, is it up here? By Wayne Ferguson, who is a lo local ceramicist. And Mary and I were at an art fair at Berea. I saw this piece and immediately was attracted to it because it's sort of mysterious. I mean, this is himself as a uh, coyote, uh, the mischief maker. And he was, it's, it, the story is that he was traveling with a bunch of artists from California to uh, Kentucky in a van, and they stopped at a place called Barstow, California, which is evidently some godforsaken place. And he got out, and he wasn't seen for two years. And this is what happened to him while he was in Barstow. And the, 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 there were snakes and vultures, and he was uh, being about consumed by all those things, probably high on drugs or something. But anyway, uh, and so it says around the outside, Coyote gets lost near Barstow, California. And so it's a human event. It's weird, it's not quite explicable, and, and that's what attracted me. So anyway, I bought this and was going back to the car. I came back and I bought two more pieces just like that. And so that was the beginning of my addiction. And to collect is to be an addiction. It's, you know, it's, I had bought several pieces here and there, but if you're a collector, you can't stop. I was interested basically in in anything that was three-dimensional, that I had a natural affinity for that kind of art. It was less intellectual. It was more sort of feeling, you know. And then, then, I, then we, we moved more and more towards bigger things and more three-dimensional things. And so I realized that what I really was after was sculpture. All the art that we bought was, was to be lived with. I wanted to be able to see it every day. I mean, when I get up in the morning, I walk around the house and watch, watch the light on different pieces, you know, and, and, and so they become like friends in a way. And we even built a house for the, for the co collection. And it was about art, architecture, 
I feel that, that if you buy a piece of art, you may have paid for it, but it doesn't belong to you. It belongs to anybody who wants to come and look at it. And so that having people come and see the collection in a, in a house situation, um, I think it's really important because it was, it was all intended to be in a, against a domestic background and it was connected. I mean, it's like you have a big dinner party and you invite a lot of people and you don't want, every, you want people to be able to talk to each other but not be the same. And you can have a few bad boys that are going to stir the pot and mix it up. That's okay. You can have a few, not too many, because they can destroy the whole thing, but some. I think, strangely, from my standpoint, museums are not the best places to display art. <laughs> um, they're, they're very important and essential, and, I, and I'm leaving my collection to the museum for various reasons. But I think that there, there's too much art. It's, it's, so they're sort, of a, they're sort of cold sometimes and kind of overwhelming. The collections that really have made the biggest impression on me are collections that started at homes. <laughs> I'm gonna put this down here, I think. I do think that, that, that art comes to you rather than you going to art. I've been so surprised with everything in, in the collection. There's a story with every single piece that we've had, you know, how it happened to, to come my way. And but you have to prepare yourself to, to know what's up, what's coming. You know, you have to you have to be able to recognize it when it happens and to, to act on it. The Speed Museum helped me realize what is going on in the big wide world in terms of collecting. I was developing my own taste, and so that comes from a lot of different sources. It comes from some galleries, it comes from museums, it comes from everything, and, and so I've always been very aware. You have to visit museums outside here. I mean, when I, when I go to some city, the first thing I do is to look at the museum, you know, see what they got. One thing that worries me is that I don't see the same things that somebody 25 years old sees. Because, you know, I think inevitably I, I'm pulled to the past. A lot of times you don't feel at home, you know, in this new world, but it's what's happening. And reality is the most important thing. That's what you hope that, that you'll see in, in art. You will see reflections of reality. I think we're in a period of bigger change than we have any conception. So there's so many things that are happening in the world today that we, we have not grasped. We don't realize how, how much change there's going to be. And art is always changing. If it's really good art, it can be used in different ways, you know. And so when, when you take it out of this context, it will be used in totally different ways at the Speed Museum. And so that's going to get melded into the total collection of the museum. And it's not the things that the curators would necessarily have bought. The, the choices that I have made personally will have an effect on what, what is seen there. We go through life thinking we're not really very important. <laughs> and then suddenly you realize, wow, you really were. <laughs>